The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Stopwatch Finale, starring Stephen Dunn. Dick Hames is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Your family theater host for tonight, Dick Hames. And I'm happy to be with you on Family Theater tonight. You know... It's wonderful just to stop for a moment and think what a grand thing it'd be if all homes in America set aside a short time every day. A short time to gather together and just talk over all the little problems that come up in daily family life. It seems that we're often so busy today that we're apt to forget the small things in home life. The simple things that make a happy home. Yes, and kindness and understanding and family prayer. It's so easy when you think about it, and it's so wonderful to know that God is in your family, that God's blessing is on your home, because that means there's understanding and kindness and true companionship in a home. Now for tonight's Family Theater presentation, starring Stephen Dunn with Herbert Rawlinson and Bill Johnstone. Concerning Edward A. Gibson, legally tried and condemned to death in the Riverton Death House, there are these unusual facts to remember. Time's going fast, Warden. Get your mind off the time, Gibson. No, uh, no word from the governor yet? Not a thing. Can I get you any magazines, Gibson? Uh, no, thanks. I think I'll... I think I'll just wait. What's the time? Hmm, exactly four minutes after five. That makes it six hours, roughly. Right. Six hours to live. I wouldn't keep thinking about it, Gibson. You wouldn't, huh? No, I'd do something. Get my mind on other things. What, for instance? Oh, I'd uh, read the Bible or something. You're asking me to read a Bible when I got six hours to live? I can't figure a better time to read one, Gibson. Yeah, yeah, I know. They all do it, I suppose. If you want, I'll, I'll get the chaplain, too. You don't need chaplains or Bibles, Warden, when you don't believe in God. Gibson, you wouldn't be trying to fool me, would you? I think you're a pretty decent fellow. <laughs> decent fellow, huh? Yes. When they tried me and found me guilty, you still say that? That's right. Thanks, Warden. That's one of the reasons why I mentioned the chaplain. But I don't see what a chaplain... Now, wait a minute, to... Gibson. I'm telling you, Warden, Just I... Just a minute, please. Now, take your time and stop shaking like that. You'll be giving me the jitters, too. Okay. What do you want to know? You've got six hours to live, Gibson. Roughly five hours, 40 minutes, Warden. Even when I'm talking to you like this, the seconds keep going. All right. Now, Gibson, with five hours and 40 minutes to live, do you mean to tell me that, that it's just going to be all over for you tonight? Just a plain blackout? That's right. They throw the switch on you, and then it's curtains. It's quick. You get cold. It's over. Nothing more? Not a thing. Just curtains. Forever. In other words, Gibson, you just don't believe in God. Warden, how much time did you say I had left? Five hours and 40 minutes. Five hours and 40 minutes. Warden, if I had five years and 40 minutes, 500 years and 40 minutes, I still wouldn't believe in God. That's on the level, Gibson? Sure. Why should an electric chair make me change my mind? Oh, I thought I'd... Drop by and see you again, Gibson. Thanks, Warden. 
How are you doing? Okay. Want anything to help you pass the time? No, no, no. Thanks, anyway. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Uh, what's the time now? 7.23. Seven. That leaves me about three hours and a half. Three hours and a half to live. I can stay here if you want and talk to you. Wouldn't. Yes? What would you do with three hours and a half? I mean, your last three hours and a half. <laughs> oh, I'd probably get a few stiff hookers into me. <laughs> yeah, I could get a drink, couldn't I? Anything you want, Gibson. Well, I'll be honest with you, Warden, I never cared much for this stuff. Maybe a glass of beer now and then. You want beer? I can no, get you. No, no, no. No, I'm just... Well, it's something I can't explain. Yes, I... I know what you mean. How'd you like the dinner we sent over? Good, good. Swell dinner, Warden. You didn't eat much. Oh, I just wasn't hungry, that's all. Got a cigarette? Sure. Uh, no word from the governor yet. Huh? No, nothing. Here's the pack. Thanks. Light? Yeah, yeah, thanks. <sighs> cigarette tastes good. Mm -hmm. Like a smoke warden. It... Well, I always like to smoke. Kid, honest, I... I wish you had a million years to smoke. <laughs> yeah, a million years. There's nothing else I can do for you, is there? Sure. You can give me the keys and let me walk out the front door. <laughs> Offhand, Gibson, I'd say that you're one of the fellas I'd like to let out the front door. Think so? Yes, I followed your case. Yeah, the whole country followed my case, according to my lawyer. It was a pretty big show, you've got to admit. Maybe if I'd never gone into that... What's the matter? Ah, it's nothing. I just keep thinking, that's all. Sure, I... I know what you mean. It's funny how things can happen to you. I'm here in this death house tonight because... because I walked into a restaurant one day. Would you believe it? A restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't walked into that restaurant. What happened? Well, I can trace it right back to that day in the restaurant when she said... May I take your order, sir? Yeah, I'd like a steak, miss. Porterhouse. And uh, make it on the rare side, huh? Vegetables? Spinach and uh, potatoes. Only no cream on the spinach. Plain spinach. Yeah, that's right. Coffee? Yeah, you can bring me a cup of coffee, too. Yes, sir. It began with something as simple as that, Warden. Giving an order to a waitress. She wasn't what you'd call beautiful. Kind of a short girl. Brown eyes, dark hair. The Latin type you'd call her. But she had a nice face. Yeah, she was a tired looking kind of a kid, but I fell for her, Warden. Fell about as hard as a guy could fall for a girl. What happened then? I married her. We went together six months, and then he, then we had a wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was okay, too, a real church wedding. Bells, organ, rice, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, we had good times together, too, Louise and myself. I had a good job, bricklayer. Had three kids, too. Hmm. I just can't figure it out. I mean, it should have worked the other way. What do you mean, Gibson? What other way? I mean about the house. <laughs> we figured it was just about everything we wanted. You know how people like to get out of cheap flats. <laughs> you figure if you have a nice house, good big rooms... Well, it's a place you can be proud of, Warden. A place you can invite people to. Your friends. Yeah, Louise always wanted a nice house. Yes, I see. And I got her a house, Warden. <laughs> you should have heard her the first day I showed it to her. She was holding my arm and she was saying... Oh, Elliot, it's beautiful. How do you like it, Louise? Oh. Ain't it got everything I told you? Oh, it's beautiful, Eddie. Come on, let's look around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't compare this with the old flat, can you? Oh. Look at those walls. <gasps> and Eddie, tile in the kitchen. Green tile. Uh, you like that stuff, huh? Uh. I knew you would. This is first class, honey. Oh, Eddie, I'm so happy. Yeah, will you see the rooms upstairs? Louis? Are they big? Big? You can get lost in them. They're so oh. big. And the windows, they'll knock your eye out. <laughs> they open sideways instead of up and down. <laughs> They're the kind of windows that go with a house like this. Oh. Oh. And you walk on the stairs, Eddie. 
They don't creak. Creak? Why, well, you can fall down these stairs and they won't creak. <laughs> you don't think I paid out cash for a matchbox, do you, honey? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, we... Huh? Look here. Brass knobs on the door. Uh-huh. First class, huh? Oh, Eddie, it's wonderful. <laughs> One family suburban brake model warden cost me 9000 That's <laughs> about all I had to. It was a good investment, Gibson. Yeah, that's what everybody said. Say, you know, you don't have to listen to all this, warden. I appreciate your coming here like this. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Gibson, go right ahead. I don't mind. Talk all you want. My time is my own. Yeah, yeah. Time. Time, talk. Doesn't do much good talking, does it? That was about the time you met this Jordan fellow, wasn't it? I mean, the papers covering your trial. They said something about... That's right. Uh, Jordan. Jordan lived down the street. I commuted with him practically every day on the 816. Never really understood Jordan those first six months. He, he was a quiet kind of a fellow, almost lonesome. One day, I invited him over to my house. We were sitting around that night. Before I knew it, we got talking on religion. You know how people get off on that subject when you have a get-together? Everyone sooner or later starts bringing in religion. Well, this Jordan, he says... Now, please don't misunderstand me, Gibson. I'm not trying to disparage any man's belief. You and Louise happen to be like, uh, well, like my own folks. They went to church, too. Respectable, conscientious type of people. That was their life, their belief. And I take my hat off to them. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, Jordan, but, but you say this religion stuff is a lot of malarkey. Am I right? Oh, well, that's putting it a bit too roughly, Gibson. Yeah, but you said... I merely said that I don't believe in a god. You mean you really don't believe in God, Mr. Jordan? That's right. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight, Jordan. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in heaven. You don't believe in... Uh, as I see it, Gibson, God, heaven, hell, and all the assorted angels, archangels, and devils are merely ancient superstitions which persist in disturbing the modern mind. Now, understand, I don't question the convenience of having a religion. The convenience? Yes, the, uh, the propriety, the, the usefulness of having a religion. It keeps a lot of frustrated people happy. The reward motive, you know. And you, you don't believe in prayer, Mr. Jordan? Well, if there's no God to pray to, why should I believe in prayer? Or a uh, soul, either? Yeah. Yeah, what about the soul? Oh, no, just a minute. I believe in the soul factor. It's the principle of activity. Dogs have them, cats and caterpillars, and <laughs> even man. But when you start talking to me about an immortal soul, that's where I draw the line. Where do you draw the line, Jordan? Six feet under the daisies when my time comes. <laughs> Gibson, my boy, after I pass out of the picture, my soul won't go up or down or sideways, which precludes this ugly business of having to stand before some inquisitive creator to render an account of the innumerable binges I've been on. Mr. Jordan. You, you really believe that, Jordan? I not only believe it, I preach it. It's a hobby of mine, playing the part of the naughty disillusioner. Well, I... I mean, if there's, if there's no God, as you say, then what about the commandments? The commandments, Gibson, are an unusual code of the Judaic Moors, allegedly dictated by some almighty Jehovah person with uh, appropriate thunder and lightning. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean the commandments didn't come from God like it says in the Bible? Well, if there isn't a God, I don't see how they could. But, Mr. George... Excuse me, Louise. Yeah, go ahead, Eddie. In other words, Jordan, you figure Moses was a liar. Well, let's call him a psychoneurotic. A what? A psychoneurotic. It's a peculiar complex that oh, makes... wait a minute, Jordan. <laughs> Boy, you got me in a state where I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I mean, well, everything I ever knew about the commandments and... Well, sin. <laughs> sin, Gibson. Sin is merely being caught at what society says we ought not get caught at. Society? That's my opinion. And uh, if you're not caught, Jordan? If you're not caught, Gibson, why, then you're a free man. Caught. Caught. That's a little word, Warden. Caught. They caught me. It was a dead cinch. I waited for him. Waited. Stood there. I didn't move that night. But uh, what else about this Jordan fellow? Jordan? Jordan had me mixed up ever since that talk we had in the house. I was trying to figure out some arguments. 
You know, old proof about the things I used to believe in, God and things. I wasn't too quick on the trigger. Jordan was a clever egg, I had to admit it. I said, <laughs> Jordan, you certainly can dish that stuff out. Why, you even got me bamboozled. <laughs> Maybe you're beginning to see the light, Gibson. Well, I, uh, I don't know. The more I begin to think about... I tell you what, I want you to come with me tomorrow night. Where? Jefferson Circle. I have a regular audience down there every Thursday night. You mean you make speeches in Jefferson Circle? Well, it's, uh, it's really a study. The faces of the people, Gibson. Why, they're like a bunch of scared kids when I give them the works. Well, what do you mean, the works? Oh, I call it my stopwatch finale. Stopwatch finale. That's what he called it. What did he mean, stopwatch finale? Oh, it's an old gag, Warden. You get out in front of the people, you pull out a stopwatch and... Stopwatch. Time's really gone, isn't it, Warden? I got I'm talking here as if I had a million years to live! Did you hear what I just said, Warden? You mean about... I said his name, I said, my God. Kind of habit, I guess. You sort of yell it like that when things really get black for you. Gibson, are you sure you don't want me to get the chaplain for you? No, no. I'm walking out of my own steam, Warden. Let's see, where was I? You were saying something about a stopwatch. Yeah, yeah. Well, this Jordan used to go down to Jefferson Circle every Thursday night. He'd get up on a platform in front of the people and he'd say... He had a swell voice, too. He'd say... And to prove that I'm sincere, to prove to you that no so-called God could have created this starving, this dying world, to prove that this so-called almighty God, if he does exist, is the biggest bungler and the most colossal criminal the human mind can conceive. To prove to you there is no God, I now serve notice on his majesty. If what I say is not true, then I defy God to strike me dead on this platform within five seconds. I'm timing you, God. Do you hear me? I'm giving you five seconds to strike me dead if what I say is not true. So that's what he called stopwatch finale, hmm? Yeah. Well, you know the rest of the story, Warden. It happens to thousands of people. You're going along, living, working, trying to raise kids, live normal, and bang, bang. It's like lightning the way it hits you. You don't figure on it. You just... Well, just a simple headache. That's how I came to know first. I had a headache that day, and I left the job early. I went home, opened the door of my house, and then I heard the laughing in the other room. I opened the parlor door, warden, my wife jumps out of the chair like a scared rabbit almost. I wonder why she was so nervous all of a sudden. Then I... I looked at him, Jordan. He's green enough, saying, Your wife is really a sketch, Gibson. The most delightful sense of humor. Oh, uh, Louise. Yeah. You're home early, darling. Yeah, yeah, I had a headache, it said. A sinus head? A sinus trouble? No, no, just an ordinary headache. Uh, Mr. Jordan just dropped in for some tea. Oh, it's, it's fine. Uh, you don't mind excusing me if I go upstairs? Yeah, you're, you're not sick, are you, darling? No, no, a couple of aspirins will fix it up. Oh, go ahead. Don't let me disturb you. Yeah, that's what I thought, Warden. A couple of aspirins would fix it up. But I couldn't get that other feeling out of my head. I thought about it for weeks. Maybe I was wrong. I hope maybe I was wrong and that Louise was only... Then Jim Holloway, he's my brother-in-law. Jim came up to me one day and he says... Working hard, Eddie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep me going when the weather's right. You know how it is with bricklaying. And what do you got out there in the backyard? Oh, I'm building a little garage, Jim. Laying the bricks myself. Didn't uh, Louise tell you about it? Oh, that kid sister of mine never tells me a thing. <laughs> you know, some of these days, Jim, I'm going to get a car. Louise and the kids will enjoy a trip to the beach and up to the country. I think Louise ought to go for... Well, she ought to have more fun, Jim. You know how it is with women. Staying home all day with the kids. No fun. Kind of washes them out, you know. 
Now, after I get a car... Say, Ed. Yeah? I came over to see you for something special. Oh? You don't mind if I tell you something? No, no, go right ahead, Jim. No, I don't want to get you excited. Don't want you to go losing your head or anything. Maybe I should keep quiet, and maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I'm going out on a limb. But I'm doing it because I like you, Ed. Oh, what's on your mind? It may be only rumors. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. If I were you, I'd keep my eye on that guy, Jordan. What do you mean? I mean, Louise. Yeah. Yeah, Louise. Thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot. So that's how you first found out about it, uh, Gibson, hmm? Yeah. Now maybe Jim shouldn't have told me. Uh, it's a dangerous thing going around with stories like that, even if it's the truth. I know, but Jim... Jim thought he was doing right. I don't blame him. What happened after that? Well, I was... Felt kind of sickish the rest of that day. First, I thought I wouldn't say anything to Louise, but that night in the house, I came right out with it. I told her everything that Jim said. I can still see her face getting white, the look in her eyes. All right. You know everything now. What are you going to do about it? Louise. Louise, don't look at me like that. Tell me it's... Tell me it ain't true. It is true. I love him. I tell you, I love him. You snooped, you found out, all right, I love him. What else do you want me to say? The kids, our house. Oh, Louise, honey, I can't... I just can't believe that you... Oh, it's no use. We'll figure out everything later. Later? Let's not talk about it now. Louise, can't you see what you're doing? I'm fed up with it all. I'm fed up with the sneaking and the shame. I'm... I'm finished. And I can't help it. You mean our... Our marriage, it's... It's off? Maybe it was never on. How can you say it, Louise? You're going away with him? Sooner or later. I see. I see, Louise. Okay. Yeah. Everything was clear to me then, Warden. I saw the whole picture. So I walked out of the house. Sure, I could see Jordan's point now. It was plain, plain as I nose on your face. But the first time it clicked. I should have figured the angle long ago. It was an old game, old as the hills. You could steal into a guy's house, the house you paid for and sweated for. You could steal into his house and talk to his wife. Get her infatuated, turn her head, talk to his kids. Use nice words, pat him on the back, be sociable. Be a nice guy. You could talk a lot of big talk about religion and stuff. There is no God. No God. You could say those words, and because there ain't a God, you don't have to worry about a guy's wife or his kids or his house. All you got to worry about is don't get caught, see? Don't get caught. Society doesn't like it. Well, I wasn't worrying about society. About what's right, what's wrong. Don't get caught. If that's the game Jordan was playing, then little Ed Gibson can play it too. <laughs> I walked down to Jefferson Circle that night, Warden. I saw him on the platform. A couple of hundred people were there, too. Jordan was going strong. It was the same... And if what I say is not true, I defy God to strike me dead on this platform within five seconds. I'm timing you, God. Do you hear me? I'm giving you five seconds. Time, Gibson. All right, Warden. I'm ready and waiting. I can still get a chaplain for you. No, no, no. I can make it along. Okay. Just as you say, Gibson. Warden. Yes, lad? There's uh, one thing I didn't tell you. 
Maybe you'd like to know about it. What is it? The night I shot Jordan, I... Yes? I ran to where he was lying on the platform. I see. His lips were moving, just whispering. Jordan was saying, May God have mercy on my soul. He said that? Yeah, he said it. The guy who didn't believe in God. Here's the door, Gibson. Concerning Edward A. Gibson, legally tried and condemned to death in the Riverton Death House, there is this other unusual fact to remember. After he had walked through that last door, after the electrode was applied, and shortly before the switch was thrown, he was heard to say, Oh, my God. My God. Have mercy on my soul. You have heard Stopwatch Finale, starring Stephen Dunn. Now, here is your family theater host for tonight, Dick Hames. It often happens when we look back on things, we kind of second guess, and wish we'd done things differently. Isn't that especially true when we look back and realize how differently things might have been? You know, you hear a lot about incompatibility and mental cruelty and other things that cause family breakups. But fundamentally, in every family that breaks up, there's usually only one thing wrong. People get to thinking too much about themselves, about their own happiness. Isn't it really true that you're never happier than when you make others happy? There's no difficulty in family life that can't be cured in one simple way. By kindness. That's it. Of course, it means two-way work, a two-way working agreement. Yes, and... Respect for God makes us considerate of the rights of others, and praying together is the most wonderful way to make people thoughtful and kind to one another. That's why it's so very true that a family that prays together stays together. Now, before saying goodnight... I'd like to thank Stephen Dunn for his performance as Ed Gibson. Our thanks to Timothy Mulvey for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Herbert Rawlinson as the warden and Bill Johnstone as Jordan. Gene Bates was Louise and Frank Gerstle played Jim. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Jimmy Durante and Dennis Day and Strictly Amateurs. And now this is Dick Hames saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital, which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Join us at the same time next week when our family theater stars will be Jimmy Durante and Dennis Day. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mutual Broadcasting System.